Eventually, AI is coming for all of our jobs. But I think after this video, the front desk receptionist might be on the chopping block. That's because ChatGPT and Bland AI can now handle scheduling appointments, bookings, or reservations all over the phone, making sure that your appointments don't overlap or conflict. This AI receptionist works 24 hours a day, seven days a week without breaks, lunches, or even a day off, and handles every call that comes in for your business with perfect professionalism. Oh, and your new AI employee only wants $15 a month in salary instead of $5,000 a month. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to build an AI scheduling bot that can automatically check your calendar for availability, schedule the caller for their desired appointment, and log the person's information in each calendar event. And you don't need to know how to code or have any previous knowledge to get this set up, and it only takes about 10 minutes. I have everything you need in the video description, and I'll walk you through step by step so you can get it running for yourself. Now, this video came hotly requested from many of you in the comments of my previous videos, so if you have other suggestions for AI videos, please drop a comment down below. I try to respond to every comment, and I get a little excited every time I see someone commented on a video. If you like this sort of content, consider liking the video and subscribing subscribing to my channel. I try to break down how to set up and actually use some of the new AI technology coming out. So if you want to keep up with which new technologies are actually useful for you and your business, this channel is the place for you. But let's get right into it. So to give you a brief overview of exactly how this works so you understand each step after this, we're gonna use Bland AI to set a phone number that customers or clients can call to schedule appointments, bookings, or reservations. Then we'll use make logic scenarios to check our existing calendar events and send them to our AI agent who's talking to the customer on the phone. Once the call ends, the AI will send the transcript to a second make logic scenario that will get the details from the call and create a new Google Calendar event for you. It's pretty easy once you see it in action and I have all the links and files in the video description. So first, this video is gonna assume that you already have a Google account so that you can access Google Calendar to manage appointments. If you're not sure, go to calendar.google.com and set one up. The next thing you're gonna need is a make.com account. And I have a link in the video description, so click that and it'll take you right to the signup page. Once you set up your account, I have what they call blueprints in the video description in my Google Drive folder. I've created the flow and modules that you're gonna to need to get this working, so you can load them directly into your own make.com account and then make some tweaks so that it works for your calendar. There should be two files with a .json extension to download. Once you have those in your computer, create a new scenario on Make by clicking this button here. Next, you're gonna import a blueprint, and the first one we'll set up is the event checker. So to do that, we'll click the three dots here and go to import blueprint and then choose file and find the blueprint that you just downloaded. And the first one we're gonna do is event checker. So open that, save, and you see that it's loaded my modules and everything that I saved in the JSON file. All of these objects you see are what they call modules. Each module performs a specific task that you define and then passes the result on to the next module. The first module here is what's called a webhook, and it will sit and wait for a site to ping or trigger it. And then it takes the data from that ping and flows it through the chain that we have here. The webhook that's gonna trigger this is actually Bland AI, the AI phone agent program. So let's set that up next. If you go to the video description, there's a link to sign up for Bland AI. If you need help setting that up, I have a video where I walk through setting up a Bland AI account, so check that out if you get stuck. Once you get it set up, you're gonna need an inbound phone number that your customers can call that's linked to Bland AI. You can buy multiple phone numbers, but they're $15 a month and you can cancel them whenever you want. Once you get your Bland AI account set up, from the homepage, you just need to go to phone numbers and then make sure you've got inbound selected. You can also purchase an outbound number if you wanna set the phone that your phone is calling from. Set the country code, so they have the US and Canada. Uh, I'm gonna do US, and then you can actually set the area code and then select one of the numbers that you want to be your inbound phone number. So this is the number that your customers are gonna call. So for this example, I'm in Los Angeles, I'm gonna do 213, we'll do the first result here, and then hit purchase. It's gonna ask if you wanna confirm the subscription, hit confirm. Once you have your own inbound number, we'll set up how the AI agent handles any calls coming into that number. First. You can pick uh, which model you wanna use. I prefer enhanced, it seems to work better on the phone, so select that. After that, you can pick the voice. Uh, they have bland curated clone voices or public voices. In the public voices, I've used Blandy 8 because it sounds like the character from her, that's kinda cool. You'll get used to it. After the voice, 
you can actually set the first sentence that the AI will answer the call with. So in this example, I've said, thank you for calling Dream Golf Course. How can I help you today? So for example, today I'm doing this as uh, a fictional golf course called Dream Golf Course, helping people that call the golf course schedule a tee time. This next part here is the prompt for the AI. And I have this in the video description, so feel free to copy mine for this example, and then you can make tweaks so it works for whatever your use case is. I've formatted this based on how Bland AI sort of recommends to do their prompting so that it works best with their AI agents. But the gist of it is that it's going to follow this script that I have at the bottom and it will use what's called dynamic data. And I'll get into what that is here in a second. For now, you can kind of read through this and get the gist of it. Pathway ID, um, you're gonna actually leave this blank for this example. Uh, this has to do with the conversational pathways. I opted to use a different approach for this example, but you can use that as well. But for this example, leave pathway ID blank. And then down here, ranges I'm not gonna touch. And then actually skip down to the very bottom where it says dynamic data. So in this section, you're gonna hit the plus API request. This is where we're gonna link the make.com sequence that we just imported to the Bland AI agent so they can talk back and forth. For the URL, we're gonna actually go back to the make sequence that we imported earlier and click the webhook module. And you can say create a webhook. Uh, it's gonna say, what do you wanna name it? click save, and then you're gonna see this URL here. Copy that address to your clipboard, and then paste it into the webhook URL in Bland AI. I'm gonna redo this one with our example here. For the method, put it as post, um, and then for headers, make sure it says content type, uh, application, JSON. Now, if you scroll down, you'll see where it says variable one down here. Now, variable one is defining the response that we get from make, so we can use it in our conversation. In this example, Bland AI is gonna ping our make sequence to get the existing events off the Google calendar and then make will send back all the events off the calendar for the next three months. Then the AI can find a time slot that doesn't conflict with any of the existing events from the calendar. So to define the busy times that we get sent back from make under JSON path to data put dollar sign dot data and this is defining the path in the response to the information we care about. Now we're going to name the variable and I have it as g underscore busy for Google busy time. Then we need to give the AI some context of what this variable is. So I have a on the calendar already scheduled for the next three months are and then double curly braces g underscore busy double curly braces so if you do these double curly braces it'll actually put the value for the ai to read if i had a list of busy events anywhere i have the variable and double curly braces the ai will actually get the full output of that variable value now for this example we only need to pull the busy times once so i have the save response toggle here turned on if you leave this off each time the person speaks it will actually ping the webhook uh, this can be useful if you want the AI to have the latest Bitcoin price or active order status, for example. But for this example, our busy times are not going to change while the person's on the call. So I'm going to leave it as a saved response. So it only does the ping one time. Great. So now I'm going to save it. Now let's finish setting up the make sequence we imported earlier. So go back to make and click on the Google Calendar module. Now you're going to log into your Google Calendar so that it links your Google Calendar to this sequence. Once you've done that, we need the specific calendar ID for the calendar that we want this tool to look at. Now, mine loaded actually my calendar ID, so uh, delete that and we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to find your actual calendar ID. So you go back to your Google Calendar, you'll see my calendars here and the three dots. If you click that and then go to settings and sharing, if you scroll down to where it says integrate calendar, there's a calendar ID here. So you can copy that and then paste it into that calendar ID box in make and click okay. So now I'm gonna save it. Now we're gonna test if this is working correctly or not. Hit this run once play button and then go back to Bland AI and click test request. Once you do that, you'll see the information sent from Bland AI start moving through the modules in Make until it gets to the end. If it errors, that means you need to adjust something and it should give you information on why it failed. This little bubble here is the value of what was passed through that module and the green check means that it worked. So the fact that you have these little green markers means that it got all the way to the end. If we go back to Bland AI, we can see the response we got down here under the data hence the dollar sign dot data path from before. So you can see here it says accepted, the status is 269. That's actually, I set that in the end webhook. You can see data uh, is actually empty. Uh, for the test hook, there was no data that, it, that make sent back to Bland AI. So in this example, the data here is blank, but when we're checking our calendars, you'll see in our example, we're gonna get dates of existing events, and this will be populated with those, with those dates and times. Great, so the event checker is working correctly. So we can 
can save that. And then now we need to import the second blueprint from the video description. This one's gonna be the event creation blueprint. So go to scenarios and create new scenario. And just like before, we're gonna go to import blueprint and find the second blueprint here. So event creation, click save. And now you're gonna see the sequence here. And the first thing I wanna do is link my OpenAI ChatGPT account to this make sequence. So if you click the OpenAI icon here and click create a connection, it's gonna pull up this box here where you need to input your API key and your organization ID. Now, if you need help getting your API key set up with OpenAI, AI. I have a video walking through exactly how to do that step by step and I'll try to link it here. OpenAI has changed their website a little bit since I made that video, but I'll quickly show you how to find your API key and organization ID here. So go to openai.com, log in, and then go to the API section, go to API keys, create an API key, I'm gonna call this make demo, and then copy this API key, and this is what you're gonna plug into the make module. Paste that there. Now I need the organization ID, so go back to OpenAI, and then click on settings, and you'll see organization here, and then you'll see your organization ID. So copy that, go back to the make window, and paste that in there, and then hit save. And that should link your OpenAI account to make. And it's gonna populate with some information here that I filled in. You can change this stuff if you'd like. There's certain sequences where I felt ChatGPT4 was a better model to use when there was more nuance to what I needed it to handle or a more complex task. So this first one here, the prompt I'm giving ChatGPT is to pull in the transcript from the call that you have with the person calling the phone number. So this is the entire call transcript. Once it's done, it gets sent to this webhook. The webhook is gonna remove just the transcript and then it's passing it into the OpenAI prompt here. So just like before with the double curly braces, uh, it passes in the actual value. So I'm saying from the entire transcript, summarize the reservation or booking information and assume the year is now, so it's gonna to be today's date, and then uh, the year in the format 2024 in this example, unless otherwise specified. Uh, that's because I realized that GPT-4 was trained until 2023, so sometimes if it just got you know the first part of a date, it would think that it was actually 2023, so if they said like May 20th, it would say May 20th, 2023, and then it's creating an event a year before. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that it's creating events in 2024 in this example, or whatever the current year is. So um, unless otherwise specified, then give the uh, date in the standard format of month, month, day, day, year, year, year. Um, and then it's gonna give the reservation start time and give the caller's name and the caller's phone numbers. As part of the prompt, the AI agent is gonna say, when do you want this reservation for? Uh, once the person confirms it, it's gonna say, okay, great. Reservation on this date, at this time, can I get a name for the reservation? And can I get a phone number for the reservation? And this is basically just pulling that detail into a single block. So this is just like the important details that we're trying to pull out. If you click this next one, we're gonna go ahead and link. You're gonna see it has your open an AI account as a drop down now that you've logged in once. Click that, and then you can see for this one, it's a little less complex. So I'm saying GPT 3.5. Parse out the reservation date from the result of the previous module and include the day, month, and year in the format of this only. The date must be a future date on or after today. Uh, again, this is to prevent it from thinking that it's 2023. Uh, and then I just put this sort of disclaimer that the only text result should be the reservation date in the format. Uh, so it's not gonna say, thanks for asking, here's the date. Like it's only gonna give the, the result as the, as the date. And again, this is the reservation date that the caller wants. So now start time, again, like your open AI account. This is gonna read this and then get the start date that the caller wanted. Uh, so now what we're, what we're basically doing is creating variables that we can then set as the details for the calendar event. So now we've got the date that the person wants, we've got the time defined as a variable here. I'm gonna get the caller's name in this one and then the last one here is getting their phone number out of the transcript. So now we can go to the Google Calendar event and link the Google Calendar that I logged into from the other sequence. So you wanna make sure you've got your calendar ID selected here. For some reason it's defaulting to mine, so make sure that you link yours there. Uh, but then in the event name, uh, so this is in the Google Calendar event that I'm creating, this is gonna be the name of the event. So when you're looking at the calendar, this is what the title of that event is gonna be. So I'm saying the person's name's tea time on the date at 
this time, and then I'm giving the contact phone number so that you can contact the person, and then I'm listing when this reservation was created. So now you can imagine looking at your Google Calendar, you're gonna see now in these where it says no title, in the title is gonna say Brad's reservation for May 20th at 9 a.m., and then his phone number and when it was created. So now you just have some like information about the reservations that you're making in the calendar. Now I'm gonna set the actual start time, so this is how it knows where to put it in your calendar. Um, and so it's gonna be the date plus the time that we got from module five. End date, you could put that in here, you'd, have, you'd add that module. Uh, for this one, it assumes that the event is one hour because ha that's how I have it set up down here. So you can set the duration, of, you don't need an end time then. You could add an OpenAI module that also finds the end time and put that in here if you want. But for tea times, I'm just spacing everything out as one hour. All right, so click okay. And now we need to actually link the webhook to Bland AI. If you click this, it'll let you uh, create a webhook. You'll see this link here again. Go ahead and copy this address to your clipboard and go back to Bland AI. So if you scroll all the way up here to where it says webhook right below ranges, paste the event creation webhook in this section here. So what this webhook is, is basically at the end of the call, when the call ends and the person's hung up and the AI agent's hung up, it's gonna send all the call information to this address. All the call information is gonna have the transcript. Right? Basically what this module is doing is pulling in the transcript. This array aggregator is pulling out just the transcript piece of the call information that we're getting and then pulling out only the transcript that it's passing then into our first open AI module. And if you wanna test it, you can hit run once, go back to Bland AI and if you go to test webhook here, then go back to here, you should see it run. So you can see it's going through um, and then it's gonna error out at the end here because with the test, it's not actually sending like a proper call transcript. It doesn't have all the information that we need for it to run successfully, like the date, the start time, the person's name, their phone number and everything. So you can actually see what it sends here. So this is under the transcript. It shows you when it was created. Hey, it's Bob's Donuts. Um, how can I help you? So this is the information from Bland AI being sent to our make module. And then this is trying to parse out the transcript. And then the final tool here defines the transcript as a variable. That thing gets passed into the open AI. And unfortunately with the test webhook, it doesn't work right. These run successfully, but basically they're just saying like, hey, you didn't give me anything. Hey, you didn't give me anything. And then it finally gets to the end. It's like, I don't have anything to create a Google calendar event. But when you're testing the webhook, it actually, this is, this is a good sign when it gets to this point. That means it's actually set up correctly. Save that. So the next thing we wanna do is go to our make profile and go to time zone options and make sure that you have this set to the time zone that you're in or that your calendar is in. Uh, I had messed this up initially and I kept getting calendar events like exactly three hours after you know it, it was saved. And I realized I didn't have my time zone set. Little trick there to uh, help you out because stump me for a little bit. So once you have that set, you can go back to the scenarios and then toggle these on. And so now these triggers are waiting for a bland AI call for the find busy time. So now it's just waiting for an inbound call and it'll fire this and pull the information from our calendar. Uh, and then once the call ends, it's gonna fire this one and it's gonna take the transcript, feed it into this, uh, get all the important information out of the call transcript and then create a Google Calendar event that's gonna update on the Google Calendar that we linked. So let's test this out and see it in action. Thank you for calling Dream Golf Course. How can I help you today? Uh, yeah, I'd like to book a tea time, please. Great, I can help with that. What day or date were you thinking? Um, let's do May 21st. Great, let me check our calendar for available times on May 21st. One moment, please. I found a few available times for you. We have slots at 9 a.m., 12.30 p.m., and 4 p.m. Which one works best for you? Uh, let's do 9 a.m. You've selected the 9 a.m. time slot. May I have a name for the reservation? Uh, yeah, it's James. And a phone number in case we need to contact you? Yeah, it's 123-555-1234. Great. Your tea time is reserved for 9 a.m. on May 21st under the name James. We're looking forward to seeing you at Dream Golf Course. Have a wonderful day. Thanks. Bye. And then once the call ends, you see our event pops up on the calendar at the date and time that we requested with the title containing all the information, including when it was created, the contact phone number, uh, and the name on the reservation all in the title.
But that's all there is to it. And now you'll have an AI receptionist who can schedule reservations so that you can focus on other parts of your business or save yourself some money by not having to hire a receptionist or an assistant. A uh, reminder again, all the links and files are in the video description, so make sure you get everything there. If you like the video, please consider hitting the like button. It helps me know what type of content to focus on. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on the next video and ensures that you're up to speed with the latest technology to improve you or your business. That's all for now. Until next time, thanks.